Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Spider-Man movie thoughts. As with the review, I will try to say the positives before I get to the negatives. I find that this does a good job of sort of dealing with the Spider-Man Peter Parker curse that of you know having to excuse me having to keep people excuse me at an arm's length because he's worried that someone will find out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and go after the ones he loves you know and the film actually does a pretty good job of, I mean you can really follow Peter's thinking on that, you know, Goblin attacks Aunt May, you know, she's all like, oh, those eyes, those horrible yellow eyes, and instead of jumping to the logical conclusion of someone with jaundice attacked him, he figured that it was the big green armor wearing freak, I don't know. Call me crazy, that's not what I would have thought. You know, right after that, you know, once he finds out that, you know, yeah, that MJ and Peter are, you know, in love with each other, Goblin goes after her. And, you know, then you have, you know, May in the hospital bed telling Peter, you know, everybody else already knew that you, you know, you're in love with her. And then he figures that she's going to be attacked, and sure enough, she is. So, you know, you can really follow how, you know, yeah, that really is very dangerous. I thought this did a, did a pretty good job of supplying Gobby with an arsenal, and, you know, him using it not to terribly much effect other than, you know, the, what's it called? Pumpkin bombs. The pumpkin bombs he gets a couple of people with. The rest of the stuff he just kind of fires the Spider-Man never hitting anything, but yeah. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised that that rocket he fires at the Unity, Unity Day Festival or whatever didn't hit Spider-Man. It seemed to just kind of hit the ground. I don't know, I guess when you're aiming with your feet, you don't hit all that well. I gotta say, I find Harry to be kind of a jerk in this movie. I mean, I understand some of it. I understand why he needed to go to Norman and say, you know, I broke up, you know, we, me and MJ broke up. She wants to be with Peter, and you know that that was necessary for you know Gobby to find that out. And actually, that's about the only one I can really think of. Other than that, he's just kind of a jerk. You know, he early on he steals some of the facts that you know Peter supplied him with to try to hit on Mary Jane. And also, is it just me? Maybe it's just me. But it seems like the guy who actually breaks up with MJ, you know, the whole, you know, here, here, take your ring back, kind of brief scene. That's actually Flash Thompson, isn't it? That wasn't who she was dating, was it? I don't know, maybe it's just me. It just seems like in, you know, on, on the bus, she's sitting with her actual boyfriend and it's some blonde dude, the, the one who almost helps Flash out in the fight. By the way, Flash, you couldn't have gotten his look any more wrong. Honestly, it's just orange hair. I don't remember the color of his t-shirt, but I'm pretty sure he has a, like a standard color. Yeah, I appreciate the irony of me not even being able to completely remember his look whilst complaining about the film's take on his look. But if you wanted to point that out, you still may, of course. Yeah, I just, if they hadn't said his name, I wouldn't have thought, oh, well, that's Flash, you know. 
No, I'm sorry, that doesn't really... Okay, the personality. Kind of that, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, I don't get why Harry has to be such a big jerk. I, I don't get why the two of them are friends. I don't see friendship between them, kind of. You know, I, that's really what I'm getting at. I also... I don't personally completely believe, in this movie at least, the relationship between MJ and Peter, or at least that, you know, just his his being in love with her and her, that there being a chance that she might notice him kind of thing, until maybe around the time where he gives that really, you know, sweet, heartfelt speech, which he of course has to ruin because Sam Raimi is just such a spoiled sport, so, such a cynic. You know, with, oh yeah, I said something like that, <laughs> whatever, you know, but yeah, when, when he has that big speech, there I kind of feel, okay, he loves her, but other than that, I don't know, he seems like a little bit of a creepy stalker, you know, when she says, I might have a superhero stalker, yeah, one, one part of him is a superhero, and one part of him is regular, you know, part, part superhero, part high school student, all creepy stalker, you know, just, yeah, you know, and, I, I don't think that Robocop movie would have sold quite as well. Yeah, I think that about covers it for that. <laughs> thing, about Flash, that, that of course brings up the visualization of the spider sense. I'm not saying they should have gone with what they do in the comic with the, well, they, they couldn't just copy the comic, obviously, because in the comic, it's just, you know, these uh, motion lines, I don't know what what you call them, I'm not a, yeah, I, I don't know the vernacular, but, yeah, you, you obviously need to come up with something, but slow motion, that's, that's it, that's what you come up with, I mean, it sort of works in that first scene, but at the same time, it's just, Kind of, I mean, at first, for a while, he's not even really, it's not even stuff that's dangerous to him. I mean, there's like a fly, and it's like, you know, that's just to visualize, oh, look, you know, he's seeing things as if they move so slowly that he can see the fly, really, so, you know, yeah, okay, so we get that aspect, but then, you know, it's only when the, you know, when Flash starts, you know, trying to punch him, then you can kind of see, ah, it, you know, it allows him to avoid danger. But then when it returns later on in the film, at first, I didn't even completely realize that that, one was going, that was what was supposed to be going on. That when, again, the Unity Day attack, you know, pretty good buildup of Gobby there, I'd say. That's, that's one of the first times you see him really in action, you know. It's... Yeah, I mean, sure, he's made these you know, two minor attacks where he each time has to say back to the person who said something to him he didn't like, you know, and then, you know, killing that person. But anyway, yeah, pretty good build-up. You know, you, you do kind of feel terror at the sight of Gobby. But yeah, if I hadn't read the comic, I'm not sure I would have even put together, oh, he's like... The, the spider sense is going off, and he's, you know, being able to tell, ah, something's, something dangerous is going. You know, I just, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they should have done, but they should have come up with something where it would have, I don't know, maybe a sound, may, or at least they, they probably do somewhat use the same sound, but a more recognizable sound. Like, you know, just something where the moment you hear it, you're like, oh, that's what's going on. You know, it just... I realized that it was probably easier with Daredevil because that really does need to be a full-on visual, you know, the, the blind -o vision of that, but... I gotta say, I like that a lot better. You, you're never un, unclear on, you know, what's going on, why it works, or that that's what's going on, that, that he's using... It just... yeah. Anyway, I will get to that movie as well. I have a few pretty major complaints about Gabi. First of all, the alter ego thing with 
him talking, I don't know, it just really didn't work. It looked quite silly. For, for example, when, I mean, one thing is when, when he's talking to the mirror and like the mirror talks back, sort of, and eventually they have two mirror images sort of talking to each other. It just gets impossibly silly when he's talking to the freaking mask, which is hanging on, you know, the, the chair. It's just, that's just too much. I don't know, it... And another thing is the motives of... It, it just, at first I totally get it. I get the revenge. But then once he runs out of people taking to take revenge on, you know, fortunately that's around the same time he meets Spider-Man, so we don't have to be mistreated to any scenes of Gobby just throwing a tennis ball against the wall, thinking about, well, what, what the crap do I do now? I have this armor, I, I'm evil, I, I have a maniacal laugh, I need to do something, but I don't know what. But yeah, once he meets Spider-Man, he consults the super villain handbook and says, ah, well, I should probably try to get him over to my side first, because that's what we do in my line of business. So he tries to get him over to his side, and, you know, Spider-Man refuses because Probably because it's not even entirely clear what the crap Gobby's even really... What, what are they... Is Gobby asking him to go out and find more people he can get revenge on? What exactly is he... Do, he's, he's not like... You know, actu actually doing anything. It doesn't seem like he has a plan. I really hate to actually use LXG as a positive example. But in that movie, again, not a spoiler, it happens like half an hour into that movie, the bad guy confronts the good guys saying, hey, join me. You know what? He actually does have a plan. He is doing something that they, you know, they don't know exactly what he's doing, but they know that he's doing something. So when he says, join me, they actually know that there's something to join. Gobby is just you know, he's been taking revenge on people, and now he's done with that, you know. I, I get why Spider-Man wants to stop him. I have no problem with Spider-Man's motives in this entire thing, although I do wonder why he doesn't, I don't know, it, it, he doesn't really seem to be going out of his way to find Gobby or, or determine who he is or something. You know, we don't see a scene of Peter going like, who could it be? How, how do I find him? Something like that. You know, Gobby is very proactive. You know, who is he? And, you know... And by the way, that scene of him just... in the burning building... Okay, I guess he lit the building on fire, expecting that Spider-Man would eventually... You know, it would just be... He'd be just completely out of luck if Spider-Man was attending some other disaster and like the other part of you know, I'm sorry, Gobby, I don't know if you're aware of this, but New York is a fairly large place and in this movie, there's only Spider-Man to take care of it. So, you know what? He might be otherwise occupied. You know, heck, there might be an even bigger fire in the other part of town. I don't know, maybe Gobby just flew around, made sure nothing bad was happening anywhere else in New York, and then just picked a good spot, and yeah. And he even puts himself into the burning building. I don't know, presumably it, the glider would be able to take him out of there, but it's still a pretty insane risk, you know, just for a gotcha kind of moment, you know. It's, he, he must just really, you know, have... have done a lot of, the, you know, have clicked a lot of those links where suddenly there's a booga booga boo scary picture on a website and, you know, said, ah, oh, I want to do that, but like 10,000 times bigger, you know, it's just, I'm sorry, the theatrics of it is just, yeah, okay, dial it down, you don't need to be quite that, wouldn't it have been, you know, as more tactically ingenious if he had just 
flown, you know, if he had been outside and just been like, yeah, I started that fire, what you gonna do about it, you know? And then they can have that conversation, but no, instead, just the, yeah. I quite like when J. Jonah Jameson gets shut up by Webb to the mouth, you know, I, I, I quite like that. Actually, once once Gobby starts really just obsessing about Spider-Man, I mean, why is he even so bothered by Spider-Man's refusal? You know, for one thing, he doesn't have a plan, and another, it just where was it in his character? Where was it in in Norman that you know you do not betray me? You do not go. It is. I don't know, I guess there's a sort of parallel with the, you know, the, they're taking their, you know, military contract over to Quest instead. I don't know. It just, you know, it, it's not like he had hired Spider-Man and then Spider-Man betrayed him. It's just, it's weak, is all I'm saying. And, yeah, once it's that, it's just, that's all he does. He just focuses completely on Spider-Man, trying to get Spider-Man, figure out who he is, hurt the people he loves and try to get at him. I, I, I just really would have preferred if he had had an actual plan and Spider-Man had to try to prevent this plan. You know, I, I'd say the, the second one does do quite a lot better on, you know, the, the bad guy. But, again, credit where it is due, this does a pretty good job with Gopi. You know, he is terrifying when he isn't hilarious, and, you know, it, it, he is a real threat to Peter Parker and those around him, you know. And the sort of setup at the end of the movie with, you know, excuse me, Harry, you know, I Spider-Man will pay for what he's done, that kind of thing, you know. I suppose that more or less covers it. <laughs> I gotta talk just a little bit about the... You know, when, when Gobby... Near the end. This is one of the things that I really hate about this movie. As a whole, I suppose I don't hate the, the movie itself. There are just elements to it that I can't stand. When Gobby is like, you know, ah, you have to save, you know, you have to choose between saving these children and Mary Jane because I'm a bad guy and bad guys make the good guys make, you know, difficult moral decisions. There's, there's really no reason for me to do this at all. And, you know, Gobby drops both of them and Spider-Man does the predictable thing and saves both of them. The scene of Spider-Man trying to save a woman he loves at, I don't know, is it the Golden Gate Bridge? I'm, I'm no good with the whole landmarks thing, but it's a bridge that, it's, it's a New York bridge which is famous. With, with his web, catching her with the web, that's a pretty significant moment in the comics. But that wasn't Mary Jane Watson. That was Gwen Stacy. And she didn't survive. And that's a really, really vital part of just the, the whole Spider-Man. It just completely messes it up. It didn't have to be at a bridge. She didn't have to get dropped like that. There could have been you know, so many other threats that they could have used, or they could have actually gone with Gwen Stacy and had her actually die and introduce Mary Jane in the second movie. But, you know, it's... that, that she actually dies, and it's not just... as, as I, I don't think that was discovered right away. I think that's, like, determined by the police, the autopsy and thing, you know, stuff. That later on, Spider-Man learns that it was 
in a way his fault because it's the web that he uses to catch her that sudden jerk cracks her neck and that's what she dies from so there actually is a chance that he could have that that she would have been okay if he hadn't interfered and there is that it's that's that's sort of like half of i mean one part is with great power comes great responsibility you know you have to save people when you can you have to fight crime if you have the power to do it but on the other hand there is also this am i making things worse you know that's actually why he even considers you know not being spider-man he's he it's it's a major part of I, to be perfectly honest spider-man of the comics is kind of emo you know he's very am i doing the right thing i, don't know, I guess marvel marvel heroes tend to be kind of emo in general but uh, spider-man might be one of the worst you know and yeah, I just really can't stand how they sort of evoke that and then just don't do it properly. And then we have, after an entire film of, ooh, the public actually hates and fears Spider-Man, or J. Jonah Jameson is trying to, and to an extent, it's working. You know, you have in this film the cover, you know, People of New York call for citizens, uh, citizens of New York call for arrest of Spider-Man. You know, there's a cop trying to arrest him right before he goes into the burning building. And then he's like, you know, I gotta go to my hero thing. Can we deal with this later? And then suddenly, New Yorkers are on the bridge throwing, I don't know, fruit, I guess, and you know, junk onto Gobby. And one of them utters the line. New Yorkers, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Have the writers of this been to New York? People there don't like each other. At all. They're, they're like, yeah, they, they... I, I would have thought that was a pretty widely accepted fact. I get that this came out after 9-11. And, you know, if, if it had just been that the movie had then ditched this, you know, J. Jonah Jameson is making people hate, you know, okay, that would have bothered me as well, but at least there wouldn't be this really weird, you know, cognitive dissonance. You know, suddenly in the movie, it's just, oh, by the way, you know, New Yorkers love Spider-Man and each other. And you know, unicorns come out of the... just... what? What just happened? Seriously. And also, just why is Gobby, you know, causing all this chaos? He's like, you know, making explosions near the bridge, and ooh, it stops the cars. Maybe that's why they throw junk at him. New Yorkers really don't like being, you know, delayed in, you know, traffic kind of situation. I think that's why. I think that one guy was just like high off, you know, some, some, maybe there's a lot of green smoke that Gobby used. I don't know. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I just gotta say one more time, I really can't stand the humor of the film. This, I'd, I'd say maybe the first half, up to and including at least Bone Saw. You know, it's just too goofy, not funny. It, you know, Sam Raimi has this thing of spending a lot of energy and effort just, you know, picking on characters, and it's just not funny. You know, just the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. And and finally, just to close out, in that first scene, you know, the the one with the really awkward, not the only awkward thing in the movie, but the really awkwardly shoehorned in narration, which exists only so that the last line of the film can be, who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Because, 
I don't know, Sam Raimi was really glad that he got to make a superhero movie that wasn't Darkman, I guess, and he wanted to reference Darkman, something. When Peter is chasing the bus, and then finally Mary Jane says to, to the driver, you know what, stop, that, if, if you just cut it there, that would be a nice gesture, and it would show that even though she maybe doesn't love him and doesn't notice him that much, she still kind of cares. She's a caring person, and she likes him, even if she doesn't notice him that much. But, she goes on to say, he's been chasing us since blah 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 Avenue. So she knew. So she's just been sitting there whilst all the other, you know, kids laughed at him, not doing anything about it. Okay, they at least have the excuse of not liking him. She supposedly likes him. This is how she treats her friends? You know, how, how dare she later say to, to Harry, thanks for standing up to me, to your father, you know, when she's barely even going to stand up to Peter in, you know, that situation. Yeah. Anyway, that's my closing thought. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.